Hey, hey, hey. Smart KC. Out here in um, the far, far east. Okay? The far, far east. I just got a couple things I want to say about uh, Dr. Uh, Boyce Watkins and Dr. Umar Johnston. This is two YouTube brothers. I watch you brothers, uh, Dr. Umar and Dr. Boyce. I understand what you guys are saying about uh, Dion. Uh, some of the points you make are valid. <clears throat> Let me start off with uh, Dr. Umar, and then I'll get to Dr. Boyce. Get the emotion out of it, my brother. You're too emotional, and that's what's wrong with us black folks. We're too emotional. Pull back the emotions, and let's think logically. And that's the problem that a lot of us don't do. We don't think logically before we speak. And you're on a platform like the Breakfast Club, and you're yelling and screaming, brother. Come on, stop it. You don't need to do that. You wouldn't get, uh, let Charlemagne the, uh, Leonard, I call him that, because he ain't my guy. Anyway, excuse me. Uh, Leonard, you have Leonard trying to speak, and he, he can't even speak. And then normally I'm not on the same team as, uh, Leonard a lot. I'm not. Some of, I, sometimes I am. I'm not a, no hater. Um, but sometimes we're on different spectrums of the conversation, if you will. But you didn't get his brother a chance to uh, respond to your your rant, if you will. I call it a rant. Um, and I would say to you is this, that Dion did not get uh, anointed the savior of HBCUs, okay? Or did he go out to pursue that position as the savior of HBCUs. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, they gave up their lives for civil rights. Okay? That was their job. That's what they aspired to be and that's what they wound up doing and they died for the cause. Dion didn't, didn't, didn't sign on to die for the cause of HBCs. Okay? And the money that he, he did receive, <clears throat> he gave half of it back to the university. And we're not going to talk about the millions of dollars that was given to SWAC by um, ESPN to do a, a ESPN uh, TV deal for these guys. They, they didn't do that because of SWAC. They did that because Dion made noise and made it happen. Let's keep it 100. Okay? They never had a deal like that before. College day comes down there. Never been to HBC. They didn't go down there for Jackson State. They came down, came down there because Dion made that shit happen. Okay? And, I, and there's a list of things that you can go research yourself. That's not my job. That's your job because you're complaining and going against him, uh, Dr. Umar. Don't do that, my brother. Don't do that, my Philly brother. I'm, de I'm, I'm, I'm from Detroit by way of L.A. From L.A. by way of Detroit. That's my two hometowns. Grew up in both. Now, in saying that, you are doing exactly the same thing that Stephen A. Smith uh, did and uh, many others did, like Shannon Sharp yeah, uh, did uh, when Kyrie Irving made his decision. They spoke against that brother, okay? You talk about Charles Barkley, but you acting like Charles Barkley right now when it comes to Dion. That's wrong, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm at to call you, look, I'm gonna call a spade a spade when I see one, okay? And I'm saying to you, this is not the time to do that. Now, on that note, we're not sure what plans Dion has. Because he's still in a position to help the HBCUs. By way of, matter of fact, do you understand he got them boys an American Airlines deal? They was riding in luxury on American Airlines. Matter of fact, I flew here on American Airlines. Baby, American Airlines ain't no spirit. <clears throat> I said again, American Airlines ain't no frontier or Southwest. American Airlines will roll you out like a champ. Dion got that deal, baby. Got them flying on American Airlines. Sponsorship. You don't know what he 
is thinking or doing in his mind, he ain't gonna tell the world what he's doing. It's like he didn't tell you what the hell he was doing when he got to uh, 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 Colorado. So I'm saying, pull back on the rhetoric, Dr. Uh, Umar. Pull back on the uh, on the rhetoric, my brother. I'm sorry, we got some music coming in on behind me. Okay, you, you got him in the shot. Uh huh. But he, you see, I'm recording, but he's still gonna play. <laughs> He got to get his money too, right? Now, on that note, <clears throat> I'm almost done with you, Dr. Omar. Like I said, you're a great brother. I love you as a black man doing some positive things for, uh, for, the, for, for the community. <clears throat> but I've watched your journey, brother. I even uh, gave you money on Cash App. Wasn't much, but it was enough to get you to hit me back to say, hey, brother, I got it, because I, I was like, I'm gonna I was going to continue to send the money. I didn't get no response. When I say response, I don't know if it's going to Nigeria, where the money going, because there's a lot of scammers going on that, that's using people's names. So I never got a word back from you saying, thank you, uh, oh, that's not enough, can you send more, anything. So I assumed that you didn't need it, so I, I stopped. Now, on that note, moving forward, you've been dealing with your school for the last several years now. Needy money. Needy money, my brother. Okay? Guess what? Dion been needing money for that organization. HBC, the SWAC, and Jackson State. Now he's in a position where he's going to have even more of his personal money. And also, his profile as a coach now has been escalated and elevated when it comes to the pocket of the, uh, of the man. He can divert some of them funds to HBCUs, my brother, brother, and to your school, Frederick Douglass. Yeah, he's in that position now. I'm going to leave you with this one, uh, Dr. Umar. Like I said, you're a special guy. You, you rant a little bit. You know, you, you, uh, the conscious, uh, what was that? The conscious, uh, you, have, you have this magnetic uh, term you use. Uh, King Kong, I think, the conscious King Kong. Sometimes that can be, it can, it can, it can shift the, the, the vibration of the universe of us, of the conversation. And I'm, I'm saying, I'm trying to be nice about it because I got to respect you as well. I'm trying to tell you, respect that brother Deion Sanders and his decision until you see him do something against us. Chill out with the bullshit, bro. I'm keeping it 100, Doc. I'm going to leave you with this one, Doc. I'm talking to Umar, and i get the boys in a minute. Have you ever seen this movie? Up, by the way, I'm Mark Casey. I'm introducing myself to you, Dr. Umar. I went to USC Film School, and they, my teacher was uh, Dr. Todd Boyd. He snuck a movie into the university, an all-white university, by the way, a movie called The Spook That Sat By The Door. I'll say that again. The spook that sat by the door. Go we'll watch that movie again because I know you know about that movie. Watch it again. It's called being subversive, being um, not letting your right hand know what your left is doing, not letting your left know what your right is doing. It's being smart. You don't know what this brother has in plan for the future, man. So chill. Chill, Dr. Umar on Dion, and I'm not on Dion's dick, I ain't no none of that, I ain't no dick riding fan, none of that, I'm Mark Casey, I make movies for a living, that's what I do, moving on, I'm sorry, I get emotional like you, uh, Dr. Umar, I get excited, but I'm, I'm, I'm in this beautiful country, I'm not going to act like no Negro in this country, or as Charlemagne would say, uh, nigga, because they, they like to use the N-word. I don't like that N-word. I think it's poison. That's another conversation for another time. <clears throat> Two things to Dr. Boyce Watkins. <coughs> Thank you for introducing the world to uh, 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 the economic program of... Uh, how did I forget my brother's name? Now I'm embarrassed. Oh, Claude, Dr. Claude. We need to see that somebody that was in the system of the government understands how the government runs because everything is a game. 
And Dr. Claw knows that is a game. And I'm glad you introduced the world to Dr. Claw's teachings and understanding because it woke me up. It made me understand that the system is not made for us the way it's set up. And Dion couldn't change that. Stop that bullshit. But he's a spark. He's the spark that ignites the fire. I say that again. He was the spark, or is the spark, to, to ignite the fire. Now the fire's coming, but that might be somebody else's torch to run with. You feel? We, we, we work as a team, okay? We work as a team. It's like you have uh, Sharpton, <laughs> Jesse, and Farrakhan. You have different ideologies, but we but we're hoping to get this, the, the best results for our people. But I'm sorry, I diverted a little bit. <clears throat> Doctor Boyce, <clears throat> two things before I talk about you and uh, Dion. Let's talk about uh, Allen Iverson. <clears throat> I was in Philly doing business, so I got to be around Allen Iverson. Back, you know, back with locker room at the games, private mansion. One of, one of the teammates that I was working with for some investment opportunities for my move, one of my films. So I was in the presence of all these uh, at the time. And let me say something to you, brother. <clears throat> it was so many vultures there, beautiful women. I, I'm not calling them beautiful women vultures. I'm just saying there were a lot of beautiful women and uh, a, lot of, a lot of things that can attract a man to make the wrong decisions or spend their money. Uh, Vultures, as far as uh, businessmen, white businessmen, black businessmen, everybody wanted something from Allen Iverson. And I know what you were saying about the deal with Reebok was a bad deal in your eyes because in 30 years you could have, you been a finance man, you could have uh, easily gave him that and more for the uh, for the investment that they put into him. Let me just tell the people what, what, what I'm talking about. Allen Iverson signed a deal with Reebok that he would get uh, a certain amount of money in uh, 20 or 30 years. I don't know what the, uh, 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 exactly what it was. I mean, year-wise, but it was, it was it was it was more than 10 years. And at that end of that uh, that contract, he would get a certain amount of a big chunk of money. I think it's either 30 million or 50 million. This research is not that, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make a point to you, Doctor Boyce, that it was not a bad decision for that individual. Okay. Because Allen Iverson at that time was was a loss. He was he was out there, baby. He was he was out there fighting, drinking, smoking. That money, if you would have got that money in advance, and I know you said you could have set it up where he couldn't get. No, it wouldn't have happened. He would have found a way to get it out. He needed uh, uh, somebody to hold his hand like Reeboks. So when he get to 55 or 65, whatever age it is, when they release that bread, he won't be destitute. Now I hope he don't borrow against that money I know there's a certain amount he, he has to hold he can't borrow against but my point is to you Alan Iverson would not have had that 30 million or 50 million that's coming to him he would have blew it this brother had uh, Rolls Royces all in the back of, uh, of the spectrum and I, I mean, who was all these ro anyway <clears throat> trust me he was a young man doing the hip hop 90s era, era. And with no sense when it comes to money management, let's keep it 100. No sense. So that was the best thing he could have done was sign that Reebok deal, no matter what you say. And I'm not I'm not talking like some some man saying um, I love my slave master. No, hell no. But when when you're in a situation that he was in, as far as drinking, smoking, having a good time, women, everything. You need some a guardian or somebody to watch over your money. I don't care what race they are, if they're on your team, to watch over your money. So Reebok was they, that investment they did to him. They knew they they saw that he wasn't in a position where he could hold on to that film, that money. So they took advantage of the situation. They did, but guess what? Sometimes God can turn a bad situation to a good situation, and that's what happened to Alan, Alan Iverson when it came to that Reebok deal. That was a blessing that he did not do those things that you said because that money would be gone right now he was out there baby this is 19 this is the 90s he was cracking back in the 90s okay you remember 
so in saying that my man see I'm on, I'm recording, he gonna stop, he gonna stay right on my head over here. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got a couple of texts coming in. On that note, um, I also want to talk about Dion with you, Doctor Boyce. Okay. Now, brother, you the main one talking about finances. You the main one talking about finances. Now, how the hell are you gonna tell a man to not put himself in a position to earn more money? And that's that's your whole conversation is about earning more money. Okay. So, if anything, you should be celebrating Dion that now he's in a position to earn more money. To earn more money, Dr. Boyce. Remember, he gave half of his salary back to Jackson State. Remember, he brought in sponsorship. Remember, he brought in uh, uh, ESPN. Remember, he brought in college. Remember all these positive things he brought to brought money to that university and to the HBCUs. Let's keep it 100. So, at the end of the day, he, he did more than you ever did for black folks or HBCUs. Let's keep it 100. No disrespect there, Dr. Boyce, but let's keep it 100. If you want to rant back to me, that's okay. I'm Mark Casey. I make these independent movies. I got one step in Hollywood, one step in independent world. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm done with independent. I'm going back to Hollywood. But that's all, that's my business. So if you want to go off and find out who the hell Mark Casey is, I'm just letting you know ahead of time. But you talk about finances all the time. That's all you talk about is Black Wall Street. He's put himself in a position now financially so he can, he can, he, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. He put himself in, in, in oh, 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 yeah. He put himself in a situation where he can, he put himself in a situation where he could make more money so he can give it out. He already showed you they give out his money, he give out his money, he give out his time. So how the hell can you ridicule, excuse me, in this beautiful country called India and enjoying some some chai tea. But on that note, all I'm saying is my brothers, my two educated doctor brothers, don't be no hypocrites. You talk about Stephen A. Smith, Coonan, I hate to say it, my two doctors was Coonan when it came to the talking against Deion Sanders. Do not put your negative energy in this universe about that man that showed you how much he loved his people. And he got a black woman. He got my girl, Tracy Edmonds. Woo! And if he didn't get her, that, I was in line for her. That's how fine she is. She's gorgeous. And she's a black woman. She's black. He ain't got no skinny white girl like MJ, whoever that, you figure that out who that is. Or Charles Barkley, I know what Charles like as well. So my point is, Deion Sanders has been representing the black culture from the hip hop era with the MC Hammer to the nah, the grandpa era, raising his, his, his young kings, boy. And he's a he's he's a, a man, he ain't, and I, I gotta say alpha man because they didn't put a title on being a man now. No, he's a damn man. Deion Sanders is a man. He ain't taking no shit. Take them earrings out your ear. Come in here and sit up like a man. Sit up. Those are things that, that my father and my grandfather was teaching back in the day. These young bucks ain't never had nobody tell them because they raised by their mamas. Their mamas raising them. Their mamas raising them. Okay, what this, 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 and I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I had a, I, I, my mama raised me too, even though I had my father in my life. I'm sorry, I diverted from the, what I was saying. I hope I got the point across to you, Dr. Umar Johnson. I hope I got the point across to you, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Don't throw the brother under the bus for some clout to get some likes and whatever you're trying to get. Don't do that. Because that brother, Deion De Sanders, is the man. Period. When it comes with black culture. How much time have you given? Have either one of you brothers gave away half of your salary to anything black? I'll say that again. Dr. Watkins, Boyce Watkins, 
Dr. Uh, Omar Johnson, have any one of you two brothers given your salary? You went to Syracuse, man. You was teaching at Syracuse. Did you give half of your salary back to a HBCU or a university? Dr. Umar, you was in education. Did you give half of your salary back to a university, a black HBCU? Stop it with the bullshit. Stop it. Peace and love, my black doctors, okay? PhD brothers, peace.